Hi guys, I hope you are all doing well. Let's see today's question. So today's question, we are taking this up from the topic of differentiation. And if I talk about the question which is given to us here from this topic, the question tells us to find out the number of points where the curve, the curve it's given to us as y equals x raised to 5 minus 20x cube plus 50x plus 2. So this is the entire function given to us. And the question tells us to find out how many number of points are there where this equation or this curve crosses x-axis. So we have to find out how many times does this curve crosses x-axis. So let's understand. If I talk about the answer choices also that are given to us here, they are 2, 3, 4, and 5. So we need to figure out which one of the answer choice is the correct answer for the number of points where this curve intersects x-axis. So let's see the solution for this question. So to solve this question, first of all, we'll apply the concepts of differentiation. So I'll just have my function y as x raised to 5 minus 20x cubed plus 50x plus 2. Now once I have this function with me, I'll take the derivative of that with respect to x. So if I take the differentiation of that with respect to x, it gives me 5 x raised to 4 minus 20 3x squared plus 50. And this basically becomes a derivative of constant, which is 0. So that gives you 5 x raised to 4 minus 60 x squared plus 50. So I have this entire thing as my differentiation of y with respect to x. Now, if I take out some things common from here, I can take out 5 common. So that gives me x raised to 4 minus 12 x squared plus 10. So I have this with me. Now I'll put this first derivative, which I have found out as equal to 0. So if I put dy by dx equals to 0, that basically gives me 5 times x raised to 4 minus 12 x squared plus 10 equals 0. So that gives further as x raised to 4 minus 12 x squared plus 10 equals 0. So that is the basic equation that is given to us here. Now once I have this with me, let's try to solve this quadratic equation further using the formula method of solving. So if I apply the formula method, I have with me this entire thing equals 0. So basically, if I compare it with my general form ax square plus bx plus c equals 0, which gives me the values of x with the formula minus b plus minus root of b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. So from here, if I write my quadratic equation, which is x raised to 4 minus 12x squared plus 10 equals 0, that gives me again the roots of the quadratic equation as x squared equals to minus b, which is minus of minus 12, plus minus root of b square minus 4ac, so b square, which is 144, minus 4, a is 1, c is 10, divided by 2a, so 2 and a is basically 1 here. So you get 2 into 1. That gives me 12 plus minus square root of 144 minus 40, which is basically 104, divided by 2. Further, if I try to solve this, I get this as 12 plus minus 104. I can write that as 26 into 2 into 2, divided by 2. So from here, I get this as 12 plus minus 2 out. So square root of 4 basically makes it 2 root 26, divided by 2. So from here, I get this x squared as 2 common, 6 plus minus root 26 divided by 2. So x squared becomes 6 plus minus root 26. So from here, I get this value of x squared that is 6 plus minus root 26. So if I see x squared, 
it is either 6 plus root 26 or 6 minus root 26. Now, once I have root of 26 to be found out, I know square root of 25 exactly it's 5 and square root of 36 is 6. So square root of 26 is somewhere between this and it's closer to 5. So let's use the idea of rounding off and let's say it's 5.1. So if I put x square, it is 6 plus 5.1 or it is 6 minus 5.1. So from here, I get x squared as 11.1 or 0 0.9. So basically, I have x squared with me, which is 11.1 or 0 0.9. Once I have that with me, x becomes plus or minus square root of 0 0.9 or plus or minus root of 11.1. So if I see root of 0 0.9, we know that square root of 0 0.81 is basically 0 0.9 and square root of 1 is basically 1. So square root of 0 0.9 is somewhere between this. So let's round it off and put it somewhere between that. Let's say 0 0.95. Again, for 11.1, if I see, I know square root of 9 is 3 and square root of 16 is 4. So if I have 11.1, it is somewhere between 3 and 4. And 11.1 .1 is, if I see, it's 2 units away from 9 and 5 units away from 16. So if I take just one third of that, let's say, so it basically let's take 3.33 something. So I have four values with me for this. I get the values of x as minus 0 0.95 plus 0 0.95 minus 3.33 and plus 3.33. Now, once we have got four values of x, Let's understand how many points of intersection of the curve is there with the values of x that we have. So let's see x equals 0 0.95. So if I find out x, x equals to 0 0.95, let's take it as equivalent to 1. Y at this point of 1, let's see what does that become. So y at the point of 1 basically becomes 1 minus 20 plus 50 plus 2. So you get, if I write my curves equation first, y equals to, it was x raised to 5 minus 20 x cubed plus 50 x plus 2. So if I put x as 1 here, I get 1 minus 20 plus 50 plus 2. That gives me that it's going to be a positive value. So at 0 0.95, it's basically a positive value that we have. Let's figure out at minus 1 what is the case because we also have x as minus 0 0.95. So at x equals minus 0 0.95, if I check, it's minus 1 raised to 5, which is minus 1, minus 20 into minus 1 cubed, which is minus 1 again, plus 50 into minus 1 plus 2. So here if I see, I am getting that as minus 1, plus 20 minus 50 plus 2. So you get 22 minus 51, which is basically a negative value. Again, if I see for the other points, means y equals to minus 3.33. So if that curve was having a negative value, its sign changes at the other value of minus 3.33. So if I just put, let's say, minus 3.3 also, minus 3 raised to 5, which is somewhere close to minus 243. If I put minus 3 also here, minus 3 cubed, which is minus 27, minus 27 into minus 20 is plus 540, plus 50 into minus 3, which is minus 150 and plus 2. So if I see these two negative values, make it minus 393, plus this is 540, which is very big, plus 2. So it's going to be definitely a positive value. So your signs of the function are changing at the values of x that we have got already. And if I see at the last point, which is positive 3.33, it's let's put as 3 only. So it's becoming 243 minus 540 plus 150 plus 2. So even if you see, add this, you get still 395 minus 540 is a bigger value. So it's going to give you a negative answer. So you have got different values of this function. Let's see. So at x equals to 1, we put, which is just close to 0 0.95. Then you have 2, 3, then 3.33 something. And here also, if I see it's minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and there's somewhere minus 3.3.
and here also you had this close minus 0 0.9 so you have this four values of x which we put and we got different values of the function so let's plot them as well so you got for one it's positive for minus one it's negative so for one basically it means it's positive for this for minus one it's negative value somewhere then we had minus 3.33 which was turning out to become a positive value again and then we also had at 3.33 it's a negative value so if i see how many times does this cross x-axis so it's something like this and here also it is something like this so one point of crossing x-axis, the second point of crossing the x-axis, the third point of crossing the x-axis, then you will have this fourth point where it crosses x-axis and the fifth point where it will turn again. The So basically, how many points of intersection are present for this four points of x that we have got us? Five points. So because of this four points you have, three points of intersection with x-axis and the extremes after minus 3.33 and plus 3.33, it will touch two more times on the x-axis. So in total, you have basically five points of intersection of this curve with x-axis. So that is the answer for this question. That is option D. So D becomes a correct answer here for the question that was given to us. I hope you have understood how to solve this type of questions which deals with the ideas of using the idea of differentiation to find how many points of intersection of this curve are present with x-axis. So we basically found the first derivative, equated it with zero, we got a quadratic, we solved for that quadratic. We got four values of x and whatever number of values of x you get, you add plus one to that, that many points of intersection will be present of this curve with x-axis. So in total, we got five points of intersection and that matches with option D. So D becomes a correct answer here for the question that was given to us. I hope you have understood how to solve this type of question, which deals with the ideas of finding the number of points where the curve intersects any one of the axes. I'll see you again tomorrow with some other question from some other topic. And we are going to continue our series of questions on JWE mains. So stay tuned for more videos to roll out. Also, if you're enjoying these videos that we are doing every day, please do like the videos as well and do subscribe to my channel and share these videos with your friends also who are involved in the preparation of questions on JWE. So they can also take the benefit from these questions which we are solving on everyday basis. Thank you.